Alan Turing was one of the great mathematicians of the 20th century. He was also one of the first computer scientists to embark on the creation of machines that could think. He was born in London, England in 1912 and had a special talent for mathematics and science early on. Later in life, he created solutions that helped solve complicated mathematical problems and designed concepts that would later be applied to machines we use every day. Turing challenged the conventional theories of his day, which helped set forth an unprecedented advancement in technology. He attended King's College in Cambridge between 1931 and 1934. While in school, he began to think about the concepts that he was being taught, and tried to conceive of better solutions to the problems. He wrote a paper titled, On Computable Numbers with an Application to the Entscheidens Problem, which in German means the decision problem. What many mathematicians faced was a problem of proving large arithmetic statements as true or not. In his paper, Turing introduced a machine, later referred to as a Turing machine, that could be capable of performing any conceivable mathematical computation if presented as an algorithm. Any mathematical statement could be proved as true or false with the use of this imaginary machine. Turing's idea sparked a wave of innovation and creation in the computer science world. It was also groundbreaking in the idea of a universal machine, the theory that one machine could perform the tasks of any other machine, even other Turing machines. Today, universal machines are central to the study in the theory of computation and how effectively problems can be solved using algorithms. This idea led to the creation of large calculating machines that would later become computers. In reality, it's not actually a machine. It is an idealized mathematical model that diminishes the logical structure of any computing device to its most crucial parts. Little did Turing know that a man named Alonzo Church had also come to the same conclusion about a machine's computability. Later, Turing would study under Church as Turing's doctoral advisor. After his graduation from college, Turing continued his work in mathematics. In 1939, when the Second World War broke out, Turing joined the British military. While working at Bletchley Park, Turing was the lead analyst at HUD-8, the code-breaking section of the military site. He was hired to do analysis work on breaking and translating the German code. This proved difficult as the Germans changed their codes on a daily basis. To solve this issue, Turing devised a machine that could repeatedly break the code over and over. The Enigma machines were portable cipher machines with rotor scramblers. The process used sequential conditional probability to infer information about the likely settings of the Enigma machine. In other words, the machine was able to compare different symbols and sort them out using probability algorithms. Turing designed an electromechanical device called bombs, which ultimately led to the eventual breaking of the Naval Enigma Code. As World War II ended, Turing found other projects to consume his time. He decided to expand upon ideas that he'd been thinking about for a while. One idea would change the way we interact with machines forever. Since his college years, Turing was interested in the idea of a machine's intelligence and whether or not machines could think like humans do. To expand on his idea, Turing created a formula that would test a machine's ability to demonstrate intelligence. This was the first step towards building significant artificial intelligence in machines. Turing wrote a paper called Computer Machinery and Intelligence, which introduced this concept. The test he had devised for machines would be known as the Turing test. One of his tests consisted of a jury of people whom were asked to determine whether or not their questions were being answered by a computer or a real person. If the computer's responses reasonably convinced the jury that it was a human and not a machine answering their questions, then the computer would have demonstrated intelligence. Turing's ideas and concepts are still very much among us today. Computers and artificial intelligence alike were made possible because of Turing's achievements. Unfortunately, Turing was persecuted for his open homosexuality, and his tremendous work went mostly ignored during his time. Because homosexuality was illegal in the United Kingdom during the 1950s, Turing accepted chemical castration rather than serve prison time. On June 7, 1954, Alan Turing died of cyanide poisoning. His death was ruled a suicide. He was only 41 years old, just shy of his 42nd birthday. Yet, 
Some can't help but wonder what other ideas and theories a genius of his stature would have created. In the fall of 2009, Great Britain formally apologized for treating Turing so inhumanely, and acknowledged the great achievements Turing had made in advancing modern technology. With the loss of such a tremendous talent, Turing leaves behind a great volume of work that is still with us today in the technology we use with the theoretical concepts he developed.